So what are hard carry units and do they matter? So a hard carry unit isn't an official thing. This is more of like a philosophical concept about units where you have units who excel in certain roles and if you invest in them, they'll be absolutely insane. You have certain build archetypes that if you invest in them, they'll be very strong and they will allow that unit to one round enemies consistently. And having so many hard carry units on your team will drastically reduce the difficulty of a playthrough as well as open you open your team up for more hyper aggressive tactics. So in this case, I'm going to demonstrate my Tamara. Um, currently my team, I can't show everyone because there's some spoilers, but currently my team has, Let's do this. I would say like six, like five to six hard carries. So in this case, Tamara is one of them. Uh, there's some minor character spoilers, but I, I don't understand how anyone can see <laughs> like all these characters and all these videos and all this content and like not know that like Ivy's playable, for example, but moving on. All right, so back to hard carries. So so what can Tamara do that's so special? So she has a Brave Lance, which, hit, which hits four times. Uh, she has Sigurd, which allows her to essentially dive into the enemy team because it increases her mobility when she uses Sigurd. And she also can trigger Sandstorm up to four times with her passive, with her unique class. So when she attacks four times with Brave Lance, each time rolls a chance for her to Sandstorm. Now, if I get two Sandstorms before he counterattacks, he immediately dies. If I get, I think he does, he might not. But if I get, if I dodge this, he, and you know, he doesn't hit me, then I have more chances to roll. She doesn't die on counter hit and the odds are in my favor. I also could roll a crit sandstorm and kill him right out of the gate, but odds are actually in my favor because she has a 46 dex, I believe, that she will trigger at least one sandstorm and kill us. So let's see if that happens. There's a sandstorm. She should dodge this. Okay. There's a crit and he's dead. So she didn't need the crit to kill. She just needed a single sandstorm. And this is an example of a hard carry unit. She can one round things. She can get in and out. Look at this, she can get out. I can dance her. Dance. Hard carries are dance targets because you want to refresh them. And when you dance them, you also boost their stats. Uh, I believe you boost their speed, dex, and luck. Yeah, dex, speed, and luck plus three. So this increases doubling. So if you are barely not able to double something, then you can now double them. Uh, the luck increases crit rate and crit avoid. Or maybe it doesn't, maybe just crit rate in this game. And then dex increases accuracy and crit slightly. So now when she goes and attacks this this other enemy, you can see she doesn't have lethal damage without Sandstorm, but the probability of it occurring, so 46 dex means it has a 46% chance to happen, which is almost 50-50. And when you do the math, it's like 68% chance, or six, it's like somewhere around there when you hit twice of it occurring. And then when you hit four times, it's like 90 something percent chance it'll happen at least once. But this is an example of an RNG manipulation build. So she got a crit, because she has 18, there's a sandstorm. A sandstorm crit for 129. But this is clearly a hard carry build. She also LTC'd the previous map with sandstorm and brave weapon. But this is a unit that if you invest in her brave weapon and just give her all your dex books and invest in her as like a damage carry, she will become a damage carry. And certain units are better than others at doing this. Like Ivy is a really good damage carry. Alir can be a good damage carry. Chloe can be a good damage carry. Anna can be a good damage carry. Alchris can be a good damage carry. Uh, his Luna ability, exact same thing as Sandstorm, very similar. Instead of just dealing damage, like extra damage, it actually just reduces their defense, which increases his damage. And you throw a Brave Bow on him, and if you can get his speed up, he's gonna be sniping dudes. Now, he's not as consistently fast as Tamara, I would say, but he's still reasonably fast that he can brave some things. But hard carries are just basically extremely strong units that you feed on purpose with the intention of using them in a hyper-aggressive way to deplete enemies. So this is my second Maddening run. Now, I just beat this game on my first Maddening run uh, pretty recently. I basically took a break from it because my first Maddening run had so many bad decisions like so many bad like upgraded weapons, like half of my units can't even deal 10 damage to a single enemy. Do they just, because I was you know, I was experimenting with different classes as my first run. I didn't look up any growths or anything beforehand. I just wanted to do it completely blind. 
this is night and day. On my first maddening run, I had to like hide, get these to come to me, and it took me like calculation to kill them. Whereas this, I just dive and immediately kill two of them right out of the gate before anything's even happened. Like it's completely night and day. So by just having this hard carry Tamara, I've already killed two enemies just between her and a dancer. And that's very efficient. That's that's essentially each unit getting rid of a single enemy. So that's that's as efficient as you possibly can be for killing enemies, right? Uh, there's very rare circumstances where you can kill multiple enemies with single attack. Um, but when enemies are split apart like this, that's not really an option. And there's very few builds that can achieve that against enemies with these defensive stats and speed stats. So having hard carries is great because it gives you dance targets. So a dance target is just a unit that you want to dance because they're very powerful. And when they snowball from leveling up and from getting abilities and all these other things and getting certain weapon upgrades, they will drastically reduce the need for calculation. So when you can just have units who just kill things, you don't have to plan as much. And when you don't have to plan as much, you beat levels faster. It's way less stressful. It's way less intense. It's much easier. So just by basic unit planning and knowing who are hard carries and who are not and how to make a hard carry will drastically increase your success rate in this game. Now, all of that being said, I didn't even know Tamara was this good until I had like invested in her hardcore in my first run. I was actually convinced she was bad. So it seems to be the case that a lot of units actually are quite good. And with some investment, they can be turned into hard carries. Um, so what's his face? Al or what's his face? What's his name? Alfred probably could be a hard carry. I think his ability is similar to Sandstorm. I have seen Saline being used in interesting ways with Levin Sword, and she's been pretty good. She's been pretty good. Uh, I use her as a utility. She has Ign Ignis, which is very similar to Sandstorm. It scales your damage. Um, but I use her for like fire creation, for debuffing. I use her as a utility because I haven't invested in her a ton. But you basically have to pick who you want to invest in. That's like the key takeaway from this video. You have to know ahead of time why you want to invest in these units, especially if you're doing a maddening or challenge run or something like that. And you have to know the pros and cons of doing that. So like the pros of Tamara is that she has really high defensive stat and she's really good on Sigurd. Uh, brave, brave Lance plus fly, Brave Lance plus five with an engraving uh, and Sandstorm with high, with like reasonably high dex is almost guaranteed to work in a lot of situations and allows her to one round a ton of things. The downside is that against like heavy armor, she has to use like different things. Um, there's, you know, like armor can be a problem for her. Her res is actually decent. She can usually tank magic and she's quite fast. So you have to know the pros and cons of all of these build archetypes. So like Ivy is really good with Lin, but without Lin, she's just decent. Uh, she's still a flyer with magic, but with Lin, she can speed stack and then start doubling. But without Lin, she's not nearly as good. So if I were to put Lin on Saline, then she might be able to be about as good as Ivy, except minus the flying, of course. So most units that are at least like an A tier unit in terms of power can become a hard carry. And knowing the pros and cons of making a unit a hard carry, like one unit a hard carry versus another, definitely helps. Honestly, I think Tamara is, is low key S tier and basically has no downsides. Um, her low strength can be mitigated with high might weapons. Um, you can also do things like throw Rider's Bane. Rider's Bane is very cheap to craft. Uh, you can put Brionac on her eight, like late game. Uh, you could give her you know, a Silver Spear, Silver Lance upgraded to plus three. You can reasonably get one of those. The Brave Lance combo works as well. Uh, for the longest time, she was running this weapon and using it quite effectively. So she had a, like a, over a 50% chance to trigger Sandstorm at 30 dex, which is mid game. You know, that's like her mid game range is around 30 decks. And she also could hit hard otherwise. And the only thing she couldn't really touch were armor. Uh, but mid game, you can get a flame lance. And if you put a flame lance on her, she can usually double armor and hit it reasonably hard. So it's good to know the pros and cons of different builds. Uh, so for example, if you don't like flyers, Ivy's a flyer, so maybe you don't want to invest in her. You could always reclass her to a sage if you wanted. Uh, Anna seems to have like basically no downside aside from her low build. Um, the other thing too is I don't have to run luck plus 10 on her. I could have just run like speed plus four and that would have been probably just as good, if not better, because then make her more offensive and she could double more consistently. 
but I opted for money. So you can have like a unit who's like Anna who can one round medium speed enemies. Right now her speed's lower because she's using a brave weapon. So here's her here's her normal speed. It's like 30, which is reasonable. Like she can she's not gonna double sword masters, but nothing will. Uh, but she can double some of these things sometimes. This is like the, the final map though, so some of these she's not gonna double at all. But she generates gold, you put Byleth on her. You can still use special dance. Like you don't have to, like say for example, did something like this just for fun. All right, who can I damage? Cause she's quite weak using this. I'll shoot this guy for fun, whatever. Let's say we take some turns. I definitely can't canter back. Actually I kind of can, especially if I poke this. All right, magic stat is bad. <laughs> Not able to poke. Um, some of these dudes are kind of tanky. Halberdiers are weirdly tanky. But she can still, like, goddess dance. You know, like, she doesn't have to... Like, if you're using Byleth, you can still goddess dance, and it's still useful. Now she just refreshed a dancer another unit. You can refresh four units. She can be danced herself. So if I want to, like, have her get danced. Dancing Anna... Helps push her speed up too, so she can double some things. Also helps. And then also using Corrin can speed debuff things. So speed boosting and speed de like debuffing like your carry units. So look at this. Look at the damage. So that's that's like her not doubling. This is her doubling. Uh, now let's see if I can double with Nova. I can. All right. So she doubles a 20%, 26% crit rate, which is roughly a 50-50 chance of critting. Now that enemy's one shot. So anyone can last hit that. And I can just check Canter 3. So I can actually go in and kill this now. So you can see how useful hard carries are. They just allow you to do things that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. I did get a lucky crit, but I have one shots anyways. We Canter back. And now we've killed three enemies in the opening. And this dude's gonna be coming in, but his speed isn't good enough to double either of these. And his damage isn't good enough, so we can counterattack him and be fine. Uh, and actually, let's see if I can outright kill him. Alright, she hasn't gotten speed stacking yet, but she can put some damage on him. And then I can do something like this. I can debuff his speed. And his stats in general. All right, better. So you can see why hard carries are good. <laughs> they just, she, she hits him twice before he counterattacks. So now they're minus four from just these units being really powerful and having like some somewhat optimized builds. Now she's starting to get speed, uh, speed taker, starting to get plus two speed stacks to plus 10 uh, per match. It resets in between the stages. This is on this map, there's like two stages. But she easily gets the plus 10 speed with this and then starts one rounding things with huge damage. And that's why I always put it on Ivy. So between Tamara, Ivy, Alir, and Anna, and also Chloe, uh, those are like my hard carries. And they do most of the work. And then these other units, like these, these two archers clean up flyers. Um, I either run him or Vale. They're both kind of just whatever. Zelkov is like an S tier unit, but I just he's just low level in this run, so he's not S, he's not that good for me personally right now. But if I would have used him the whole run, because I'm like my you know twelfth and eleventh deploy slots have just been fluctuating, I've just been trying people out. He would be really good, so he is a good unit, but he's just not a hard carry for me right now because he's under leveled. Same thing with Jade. I don't know how to make her a hard carry yet. I need to build craft or like theory craft with her a little bit. She's okay with this type of build. I put her on Wyvern. I think you don't. You just don't care about her speed and just go for damage and just give her a Brave Axe and a Silver Axe and call it a day and just go for one-shotting or maybe even Killer Axe crit build. That might be a way to build her. Uh, but she's like a B team. Like these are, well, the rest are my B team. Uh, Hortensia, she's like an S tier utility. So she's a hard carry in terms of utility because of Makaya and like warp strats and stuff. But her damage is actually respectable. She actually can deal some damage. And this is me having not used her that much. Um, I actually used her starting at chapter 16, so I didn't use her for a few chapters. Um, but yeah. 
for like two or three some plus some paralogue. So she would be a higher level otherwise. It would probably be uh, reclassed, like uh, second sealed. But yeah, that's uh, the difference between hard carries and like your B team. Now, if you just evenly invest in certain units throughout an entire run, like if I just would have always run Alchrist, he would also be a hard carry because of the XP gain. If I would have invested in Zalkov throughout, like since I obtained him, he would also be a hard carry. So I just simply have more hard carries. So because I experimented, because I'm going to be doing like maddening guides, I've like switched out units and tried different units just to see how they perform and see what they do. I have like a few underleveled units. So you should be able to, in theory, with optimal play, produce a team full of hard carries that trivializes the entire game. So that is something that you can do. You just have to know which units are good and why and also to invest in them throughout an entire run. So like not giving Vander XP early helps Alir, for example. Uh, if you plan on running Fram or Clan, feeding them XP early would help. If you plan on running Jean, feeding him XP as early as humanly possible to start power leveling him would help so that he can start snowballing his stats because he has crazy stat growths when used correctly. But yeah, that's it for this one. I just wanted to talk about like the difference in unit quality. Now, most units I would say are, are viable. I don't think there are units that are not viable. Um, maybe in their default case, like I put some things at C tier that it might be better in different classes. So that's still something I need to test. Uh, but C tier is still viable in my opinion. Like you can still run it and see some success in some way. But yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely feel free to drop a comment. Let me know who your hard carries are, what kind of tactics you run. I'm always curious to see what people are running, especially on Maddening, because there's a huge degree of diversity in terms of build viability. There's like, like I, I keep hearing about like thief builds, like crit builds that are like carrying people through Maddening. So definitely some interesting things going on in the meta game. There's a lot of, it's definitely more diverse than three houses wyvern meta, as far as I can tell. But yeah, definitely like and comment or like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.